Hi, once again, welcome back to another how-to video. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to add burn marks to a GE locomotive. This is something that's extremely common, so common in fact that these engines, the Dash 8s and Dash 9s by GE, have gotten a nickname um, of the toasters. And the reason for that is because they catch on fire from time to time and they leave these burn marks on the side of the engines. Now I can't uh, totally describe why or what catches on fire inside, but typically it's on the long hood and it's right around the exhaust stack and it leaves these really interesting and unique burn marks um, on the side of the engine. Um, so we're going to represent that here. It's something that's actually pretty easy and pretty quick um, and it, it can really make a model stand out in your fleet. So that's what I'm going to show you here. We're going to do two examples. Uh, one, I just noticed that uh, a lot of the different engines, you know, the burn marks and the way that the, the fire and heat damages the paint on the side of the engine um, is represented in different ways. I think that just depends on the type of the fire, how hot it is, um, and where it is. So we're going to do two different examples. The second reason we're doing two is because I lost a little bit of footage from the BNSF model, which I'll show you here in a minute. Um, but I have most of it, so I'm going to show that to you anyways and just talk you through the part that I didn't film accidentally. So anyways, that being said, let's go and get started. We're going to start by um, just taking a little bit of light rust weathering powder and putting it onto our little mixing tray here, which it's really just an old spray can lid, but I found they're great to um, use for mixing paint. So the first model we're going to represent kind of the burn marks that just go down to the primer, not quite all the way to the rest for most of it. So what I'm using is just a little bit of Model Master light brown here. And we're going to start by doing the edges of brown color, and then we'll add the primer on top of it. So I'm just going to give it a nice um, outline here. And using a little bit of our weathering powder, I'm just going to lighten it up just a little bit. And you can notice I'm doing this while the paint is still wet. And I'm actually going to apply all the paint colors here while they're still wet. I'm not going to wait in between coats. And the reason for that is because it actually really blends the pigments and colors together to give you a really neat overall effect. I found it's much more effective to do that than it is to wait for each paint color to dry. It gives you a lot more realistic appearance and finish, in my opinion. Now for this next part, I'm actually gonna mix some paint with weathering powder. It does a couple things. One, you can adjust the color, um, but two, the biggest reason that I found is that you can actually give it a really neat effect. Um, I'm not quite sure how to describe it, but it makes the paint really thick and it actually gives it a textured appearance when you apply it. Um, and, and it looks just like burnt, and rusted metal, which is what you'd find on the side of these engines where there's been fire. So I'm gonna just put some flat black paint down. This is Flat Black by Model Master. I'm now gonna go just inside of the brown, the light brown that I already applied, and apply a little bit of my darker brown. This is gonna give it a nice crisp and burnt edge, and we're representing this by using a couple different colors here. And as you can see, as it dries a little bit, I'm going back over it with the brush to give it a neat texture. I'm now going to use a couple different colored grays to represent the primer, which would be underneath the black on the prototype. And again, I'm going to mix these while everything's still wet. There's our dark gray. Now we're gonna come back with a little bit of light gray. As you can see by applying all of this while it's still wet, we're able to kind of blend it in a little bit, mix the colors a little bit. After letting it sit for just a few minutes, I'm going to come back and give it a little bit of texture. I'm just going to apply a little bit more of the lighter color. Just a little bit of brown and add a little bit here and there. Just to look like it was just barely burnt through the primer in some of the little areas there. I 
and coming back a little bit of black, which will kind of fade into dark brown as I apply it over the wet pigments and paint here. I think it's really messed up here. Now in this last part is my favorite thing to do to some of the Norfolk Southern locomotives. You might even see it on some of the Union Pacific or BNSF or CSX locomotives where there's stripes. A lot of times those stripes are painted, sometimes there are graphics and stickers which are applied. Um, and But whenever those are there, sometimes it affects the way the paint burns underneath it because there's more layers of paint on that area. One thing I've noticed is that oftentimes Norfolk Southern locomotives, wherever the stripes are or the graphics are, um, it's just charred in a different way. So we're going to represent that here and we're going to use a technique called dry brushing. So what I'm going to use is a little bit of white paint. Um, this is flat white again by Model Master. So it's an enamel based paint like the rest of them. We're not going to mess anything up. Um, and this time I waited for everything to dry. Dry brushing is a really neat technique that allows you to apply just a little bit of paint. So I dipped my brush here in some flat white. I got a lot of it off. And I'm re going to recreate that line where the graphic used to be. With dry brushing, it requires that you sometimes get a little bit more paint a little more often, but it allows you to apply just a little bit instead of applying a very thick coat. And the nice thing about this is you can see I actually don't really like this top line up here. It looks a little too thick to me. So I'm going to take a little bit of our brown color that's still on our color palette there and come back and just clean up that line a little bit. Now I'm going to show you real quick how to do a BNSF locomotive. As you can see, this one's just a little bit different, where it's actually burned all the way past the primer coat, all the way down to the metal. That's kind of what you represent here. And something really cool, if you look on the edges of this uh, this unit of the little burn marks there, you can see the different parts of the paint job that it's burnt through. So if you look at the edges, it's gray, like there it went through the primer, and then it gets darker and darker brown the farther in. You'll notice that oftentimes it first burns off the paint and then it starts to rust. And what we're gonna try to recreate is the pattern that, that those burn marks often add. Um, so typically, as you'll see around the outside of the burn mark, it's actually just flaked paint and, and chipped off paint where it's down to the primer, sometimes down to the metal. So the next thing we're gonna go and do is um, add a little bit of brown. I've noticed typically in just looking at prototype pictures, the brown is found more on the outside and it gets darker the closer into the middle of the burn mark that you go. As you can see, because it's still wet, it's allowing me to um, just mix it and blend it together very well. And I'm coming back just to add a little bit of light brown to the edges. And mixing that all together. Well, there you go, guys. That's how you add realistic burn marks. You can see on the side here, we really just started with gray, added light gray and got darker as we went in. We also used a little bit of that gray to kind of make a peeling paint effect on some of the graphics on the locomotive, like the yellow stripe and the B on the other side. Up top, I added a little bit of gray just to look like um, some, some bleached paint on the top panels and also some burned off paint on the top of the panels, as well as the darker rust like we did on the sides. Well, there you go. That concludes this tutorial on how to add burn marks to your GE locomotives. As you can see, and as I mentioned, the paint is kind of thick, and I noticed that it really picked up in the camera. However, once it's on the layout, it's a very subtle effect that gives the rusted metal a really neat look. So once again, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. And if you have any questions, let me know. I'd be happy to get back to you in the section below. I'll see you next time.